Hector Souza. A Mexican millionaire. Lost his wallet full of cash while out. With his daughter in a poor neighborhood. When a street urchin found it and returned it intact. He asked for an unusual reward. Which brought the millionaire and his daughter to tears. Hector Souza was returning from a tourist trip to San Diego. California. On a ferry when he realized his wallet. Was no longer in his pants pocket. The man was a millionaire who had. Previously been interviewed by Forbes. Hector Souza was a philanthropist in addition. To being a member of Mexico's super-rich elite. Since the 1990s. He has invested in large retail chains while raising. Large sums of money to provide food. Clothing, and medical care to people in his country. And throughout Latin America who are in need. That day. The millionaire was visiting a tourist attraction on. America's West Coast with his daughter. Margarita Souza. Who had just turned 18. The girl had been to that country a few times with her father. But she had never spent enough time. There to learn everything she desired. She requested a celebration in the United States. When she reached adulthood. Her father took a week off from work to accompany her. The philanthropist called a friend who worked. For a luxury hotel chain in California and explained the situation. The man planned the entire trip. For the businessman and his daughter, Margarita. The father and daughter had been in America for three days. They had seen Disney. Driven through Los Angeles. And were now in San Diego. Where they had just returned from Coronado Island. And planned to visit the zoo or water park the next day. Despite being a popular tourist destination in the area. Coronado had a poor neighborhood. With a large Mexican population. And Hector wanted to get to know its streets and people. Margarita was upset that her father had. Planned a visit to the place for her birthday. After all. She had no interest in poor neighborhoods in the United States. But the young lady put up with it to avoid any issues. It was summer. And the boat was packed with tourists. Father and daughter had already. Returned to the city via one of the routes. When the boat was approaching the port. Hector looked in his pocket for his wallet but couldn't find it. He searched other pockets. Inquired if his daughter had seen it. And looked around. Margarita asked if it had been. A while since he had used the wallet. And Hector replied that he had only used his money. To purchase a souvenir while. Visiting the poor neighborhood on the island. I told you not to go there, father. You were obviously robbed. Margarita retorted. Hector corrected his daughter because. He didn't know if it had been stolen. He stated he may have. Misplaced his wallet somewhere. Possibly on that boat packed. With tourists from all over the world. Look at the people around us. Margarita responded. Don't you think they would have. Returned it by now if they had found it. Hector only expressed his hope that whoever. Took or found his wallet would contact him and return it. Margarita had no idea. But it would soon have a significant impact on her life. Hector Souza had been back at the hotel for over. Two hours and had not received. A call from anyone who had found his wallet. The tour boat staff also searched. Everywhere but found nothing. They were concerned because the millionaire. Could sue the transportation company. But no one was more concerned than Margarita Souza. The powerful man's daughter. She knew that. In addition to cash. Several credit cards in her father's wallet were. Required for her long-awaited birthday celebration. Margarita concerned. Stated that her father had most certainly been robbed while they were on the island. Don't you realize, dad, that these people take advantage of you? You went to that poor neighborhood with such good intentions. And they ended up making a fool of you. She grumbled. 
You took me to a poor neighborhood for my birthday. Look at what we got out of it. Hector took a deep breath and told Margarita that. He loved her but that she needed to learn more about life. She was becoming a grown woman. But she still had a lot of life ahead of her. Do you believe my life has always been good and easy for me? I've been to the other side, girl. The philanthropist said. Hector reminded her that he was born. In a poor neighborhood of Mexico City. His mother was a chef. And his father was a tailor. Hector began working in a department store. In the capital at the age of 14. To help with household expenses. He could only study what he. Wanted when he was 24. At the time. He was a supervisor in the store. He told his daughter that he had to eat crow. From bosses and clients to get to his current position. He went on to say that he had taken many buses in his life to get to work every day. And that he couldn't even eat breakfast sometimes. On occasion, he had to forego lunch. But in the end, everything worked out for him. You know how I got lucky. Luck, my daughter, can also change a life, he said. He recalled meeting his wife, Margarita's mother, while finishing college and how. She died as a result of tuberculosis. Despite the fact that he was already very wealthy, nothing money could buy could save his wife. It was a devastating blow to his life. But it also served as a reminder to him to remain humble. Hector Souza became known as a philanthropist after this tragic episode, which occurred when Margarita was only three years old. Although plans to celebrate the anniversary had been thwarted, he and Margarita were safe, in the comfort of a five-star hotel that had already been paid for a month earlier, a privilege enjoyed by few people in this world. He recalled. The daughter sat quietly listening. The millionaire's phone rang the following day. It was a number he didn't recognize. When he answered, the person on the other end said he had his wallet and gave him an address that was a little outside of the tourist area. Margarita objected when she saw her. Father get up with a smile on his face. Think about it. Dad. It may be a ruse or a trap. Who can truly guarantee that they have found your wallet? Hector replied that it would be no problem. The caller had a child's voice and sounded trustworthy. Margarita then summoned the security guard, who escorted them whenever necessary, and explained what was going on. The security guard appeared in Margarita's room, and tried to persuade Hector not to go to that address. Still, Hector simply replied that he would trust his intuition and look for his wallet to continue the celebrations promised by the trip. So the three left the luxury hotel and proceeded to the nearby avenue. As the security guard drove down the avenue, they left the tourist area and entered a much more modest and less lit neighborhood. Margarita was terrified. Her birthday had become a perilous adventure. Her heart raced with each motorcycle that passed their car. If they came to a stop at a red light, she would become tense and still, looking around at the cars, as if she expected a gun to be pointed at them. The bodyguard didn't make the young lady feel any more secure or safe. It was really a frightening place for her. Hector was not afraid at all. That location reminded him of his youth in some ways. Margarita couldn't figure out how her father could be so relaxed. After all, it wasn't just his life that was in danger, but also hers. Finally, they arrived at the specified location, in a neighborhood full of very simple houses. The bodyguard refused to let Hector out of the car. When he clapped his hands, a child appeared. He was clutching the man's wallet in his small hands. He stood at the gate as the bodyguard delivered the item to the philanthropist. Hector quickly recognized it as his wallet. 
And when he opened it, he observed that all of his documents, cards, and money were still inside. Nothing was missing. The boy was probably about 13 years old. He was skinny, with bright eyes and worn out clothes. His situation wasn't much better than Hector's when he was that age. The millionaire got out of the car with his daughter and thanked the boy for returning his wallet. You saved me a lot of headaches. Thank you, he said. The boy took advantage of that well-dressed man's friendliness and asked for two dollars. Margarita started laughing nervously when she heard this. Hey, see? What did I say? Good thing we brought a bodyguard, she said. What's the matter, daughter, asked Hector. Dad, give him all of the money right away. Before his cronies show up. Let's get out of here. Margarita's reaction embarrassed the boy. So he explained, it's not like that, ma'am. I just don't have a phone. So I had to use the only money I had to call you from a public phone. I spent the night begging on the street but received nothing. So I used my savings to buy my sister a cupcake. Tomorrow is her birthday. Hector became intrigued by the boy's story. And asked him to continue telling it. To heighten Margarita's horror. The boy then said his name was Paul and that he doesn't remember much about his childhood. He hadn't known his father and had been living on the streets with his mother and sister for over a year. A few blocks away, where the rest of his family was, there was a space where several homeless people gathered to spend the night. Paul recalled having a birthday and the cake. His mother baked to celebrate when they were still living in a small apartment. It was the boy's first and only party. The cake was small. And all he had to sing happy birthday. To him was his mother and little sister. But it was the happiest memory of his life. Even though they'd been evicted. He wanted to ensure his sister felt the same way. As a result. Paul begged for money on the street to buy his sister a cake. Margarita couldn't stop crying. As she put her hands to her chest. The girl. Who had previously been afraid of that place. And suspicious of the boy's intentions. Now felt ashamed for making such hasty judgments. To top it off. Paul's sister shared her birthday. Margarita surprised everyone by handing Paul. A card from the luxury hotel she was staying in instructing him, his mother, and sister to visit the next day. She asked her father for permission before opening his wallet and handing the boy $300 bills. Paul, please use this money to buy clothes for yourself and your family. If not, you may not even be able to get to the hotel reception. She explained. Then everyone said their goodbyes. On the way back, Hector Souza directed the bodyguard to the restaurant he had reserved for Margarita's birthday celebration. But she stops him and asks them to return to the hotel. What's the matter, daughter? The millionaire inquired. Dad, what we'd spend one night here would feed Paul's family for a month. Let's just go back to the hotel and order a pizza. While we figure out what we're going to do tomorrow, okay? Hector agreed. He turned and looked proudly at his daughter. His years as a philanthropist seemed to have finally positively influenced his daughter. Paul, his sister Cindy, and his mother Elizabeth made it to a clothing store early the next morning. They left the place with brand new clothes and a good feeling. Margarita had given them enough money not only for the clothes but also for breakfast, which they hadn't had in over a year, to pay for the bus tickets to the hotel, and still have some left over. When they arrived at the place and realized it was a five-star hotel, they became shy. Paul's mother had always wanted to visit a place like that, and now that she was there, she didn't know what to do. 
After entering the lobby, the family was led to a garden with a green lawn and a table decorated with flowers and colorful decorations. Paul's sister described it as the most beautiful place she had ever seen. Her tiny eyes twinkled. Margarita responded by saying it meant everything to her. And the girl couldn't stop smiling. Hector had asked his friend who oversaw the hotel chain to invite all the families with children who were staying there to a birthday party. And many of them came out to the garden, running and playing with Cindy and Paul. Margarita was just as happy as the kids. For the first time, she realized how her father felt about helping others. Paul and Cindy had their first taste of mousse, which they slathered on a massive chocolate cake. Elizabeth, Cindy, and Paul's mother were overjoyed, and they received a hug from Margarita, who was also fighting back tears on her first day as an 18-year-old. Hector understood that one birthday party would not suffice to help the family. So he took Elizabeth to his hotel's manager. The millionaire expressed his surprise that her son had returned the wallet in the same condition in which it was found. Despite the hardships he and his family faced, and if the son had such a disposition, it could only be the result of a good upbringing. I congratulate you on your integrity, he said. And Elizabeth thanked him. The hotel manager then implied that he might be able to help her. I recently discovered that my hotel's head cleaner was involved in a petty theft scheme. She and two other employees were stealing items from our foreign guests, which they were unaware of until they returned to their home countries. Elizabeth was baffled as the supervisor spoke. The man then explained that after identifying those involved, they fired everyone and that they needed to renew the staff, which should be led by someone with integrity and a lot of confidence. I'm not sure if it was luck or something else. Elizabeth, but when your son returned that wallet intact, he changed the fate of your entire family. If you like, I can make her the head chambermaid. What do you think? The supervisor inquired of Hector. Of course, Hector responded. That makes me extremely happy. She is deserving of it. Elizabeth's mouth dropped open. She had never imagined that one day, she would set foot into a hotel like that. And now she was attending her daughter's birthday party and being offered a job. Embarrassed. She stated that she didn't know if she was qualified for the position. To which the supervisor replied, Well, Miss Elizabeth, you already have the most important qualities. Character and integrity. The following week, a new chapter in that family's life began. Paul and Cindy took the school bus. They were dressed in new clothes and had new school supplies. Elizabeth took a bus to the outskirts of town and checked into a five-star hotel to begin her new job. She considered herself to be the luckiest woman on the planet. Hector and Margarita, on the other hand, continued their planned trip. But nothing provided the same happiness that Margarita felt during the party in the hotel's garden. When she looked at her father, she realized why he was never satisfied with simply being a millionaire. Doing good for others was what made him happy. She understands it now. 